Tonight, an underdog in the Denver Rush with one of its rising stars, Crystal Wright, battled the surprising Atlanta Empire. Headed by their stud running back, Jessica Salazar. Atlanta is coming off the upset of the year and beating Austin. Can they continue their run or could we have back-to-back -back upsets? It's the X League, next. Well, you got your shot. What are you gonna do about it? All that's relevant is the seven of you on that field at any given time. You've been waiting so long to play this game. Here's the hit. Oh, man. We're going to war. Because we're not here just to win. Oh, what a hit. We're here to dominate. Oh, my goodness. We're here to take that number one spot. He now throws it back. Turn it on the afterburner is being chased. Oh! Everybody's getting their blood, sweat, and tears. Time finally throws, and it is gone! It's a big shot. Throwing end zone, it is caught! Rolling to the left, look down the field. Open, catch made, touchdown! You've given your heart and soul, so why not give it your heart and soul when you go out there? Welcome to the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado, site of the X-League's Week 6 matchup. As we welcome you inside the X-League broadcast booth, Lincoln Rose along with Lane Grigg. Of course, our buddy Kip McConico, he'll be back in the starting lineup soon enough on the upcoming X-League coverage. Lane, we look at two teams really at the crossroads of their respective seasons coming into tonight. You talk about the home team, they're playing with house money, if you will, the Denver Rush. Such low expectations in terms of their hopes of reaching postseason, but could they turn some heads with another X-League upset this season? Of course, Atlanta knows that storyline. They're the feel-good story after knocking off the Austin Sound in their last game. Absolutely. Tonight, defense is going to be very important. For Atlanta, I'm looking for the continued development of first-year defensive ends, Rachel Blacklock and ZZ Green. For Denver, they don't have any marquee players on that defense, but they've got to stop the league's number one rushing attack. It's old fashioned, all hats to the football. Yeah, so the obvious question left is if you're Denver, how do you keep your squad still believing in themselves? Of course, the best man to answer that question, Denver Rush head coach, John Hassin. Coming from the Seattle loss, as soon as we got off the plane, we knew we had to make some adjustments on the front line of the defense. So I brought in more specialists of the coaches, the coaching staff. We've been working more practices during the week with just the offensive line and the defensive line. We've been practicing on tackling drills and fundamentals. We have Jess Poole here. We've been working with her and her passing abilities and making a smarter adjustment and a smarter plays. And uh, we're, we're encouraging her to use her legs this time in the game. So uh, we know Atlanta's gonna come here to run. Uh, we're feeling like we're confident in the defense, what we have going on and the adjustments that we just made. We put E, Ethioma as the middle linebacker this time so she can have more space to uh, go left or right and, and cut down the line when it needs to be done. Under center. Our team is new. We haven't been shown in a, in a proper way from the first loss, but this, this game is gonna, gonna prove we belong in the X League. I mean, we have tough players, size, difference, speed, we have it all. So I believe in the, the players are gonna bring what we need to do, and we're all gonna be happy in the outcome when it's all over. When you rejoin us in Denver, it's week six in the X League. Atlanta Empire cross two time zones and make their way a mile high to try to find a road win tonight, fresh off of that 50 to 34 victory against the Austin Sound. Lincoln Rose, Lane Grigg with you and Lane moments away from the start here, but of course, Atlanta head coach Dane Robinson trying to continue this momentum into the postseason. Absolutely, and we talked to Coach Robinson earlier this week. He focused this week on telling his team what was at stake. It's critical. They win this game. They're 2-0. They're undefeated. They're guaranteed to make it to the playoffs. So the rush begin with the football. Can they strike first and set the tone here as they'll keep it on the ground early on, the handoff? As you see the number called of Kelly Kells, former practice player in the WNBA out there on the hardwood. Now in her second year, great military background. See if she can help lead these troops. 
Absolutely, and I think you're going to see the rushing game early and often to keep the pressure off first-year quarterback. And they will keep it on the ground. Bria Quintana inching them a little closer to about the 22-yard line. Of course, that clock continues to run here in the opening quarter. Look at Rachel Blacklock bearing down the Atlanta native. Trying to come up with a stop here on third down. And again, Atlanta defense does travel. Absolutely, and that's big number 15, Julia Fazekai, six foot one, coming for a defensive end spot. And also from the pregame, set, uh, number 33, ZZ Green. What a rookie, ZZ Green, a multi-sport athlete growing up, both track and field and field hockey. Of course, we don't kick here in the X League, so on fourth down, you go for it. And Denver convert here. Poole calls her own number, trying to find that first down marker, and Atlanta's going to get this football. Jessica Poole, back-to-back -back plays where she'll call her number. Looks like we're going to have a penalty on the play. Let's see what it is, Lincoln. Sean Burrow, our referee tonight. Having trouble with his mic. It looks like it's offside, though. Offside. Picking up the first down on its own merit. Coach Asin wanted to turn quarterback Jessica Poole loose. Her legs were a big part in their success versus that game versus Seattle, and she's picking up where she left off. The Toronto native again at quarterback. As she'll quickly get the handoff. Second carry already for Kelly Kells before she's wrapped up with that high tackle. And that's number 44, Nina Francis, coming in for a defensive back spot, doing a great job setting the edge and not letting that play develop at all. Nina Francis making a short trek over to Denver from her hometown of Berlin, Germany, where she'd already been in the States uh, with a variety of football opportunities. Second and eight from the 12-yard line. And... Picked off, Atlanta's defense has come through on the opening drive, forcing the turnover. And what a huge play early on to set the tone by guess who, Jessica Salazar. And unfortunately, that was a problem for Jessica Poole in the last game where she threw three interceptions versus Seattle. And on this first drive where they were having some success in moving the chains, here is her fourth interception of the year and an absolutely fantastic job on that interception there from Atlanta. And let's see if they get their league leading rushing attack started early here. Salazar, former volleyball player, looked like a libero getting down for a dig, getting her hands underneath that one with the pick. All right, so can defense lead to offense now after the turnover? Sets up Atlanta for the first time. Hodgins under center on first down. And great blocking up front. You do see a flag down, however. We'll see which way this one goes. Receiver. 
So they accept the five-yard penalty. Hodgins will roll to her right. Has an opportunity downfield looking for the big gain, but not on the same page with Jessica Salazar working her way downfield. Hodgins is going to look for Salazar coming out of the backfield here on a wheel route right up the sideline, and it looked like Salazar shut that route off short and the quarterback was thinking that that ball was going deep. The running back was looking at something different, and it ended up being a ball that was well overthrown. So after they accepted the penalty on first down and an incomplete pass one play later, here's second down for the Atlanta Empire. And they will keep it on the ground. Blocks in place, tackles being broken across midfield. And again, they will go back to Salazar. And that's what we saw when they played Austin a few weeks ago. Steady diet of Salazar off the right tight end, off the left tight end. It's one of these things. It's three, four, five yards of play. Very impressive. He's a guy with great size at 6'1". Played her Division I college basketball at Jacksonville State. A little misdirection. And Atlanta continues to turn out the yardage. Now inside the 15-yard line as the most recent carry, a good one from Lauren Ziegler. And you're looking at the number one and number two rushers in the league. Lauren Ziegler has the slight edge over teammate Jessica Salazar. Sort of a thunder and lightning combination. Ziegler with just a little bit more of that top end speed. And you can see that on a really nice pickup there. So after the interception on their first defensive stop by Jessica Salazar, Bailey Hodgins continues to march this Atlanta Empire downfield as the Empire trying to strike first. Fresh off of that 50 to 34 win over the Austin Sound in their last game. Salazar follows her blocks and she'll be stopped about three yards shy in the boards of that first trip to Pater. We talked about defense, defense, and more defense in the opener. For Denver, they're going to have to do what's called set in the edge. Someone in that defense is going to have to come up hard, fast, as soon as they see Salazar heading off tackle, or she's going to have another big night, Lincoln. That offensive line has been able to win the battle all night. They do, in fact, keep it on the ground. Salazar, though, on a rare occasion, met at the line of scrimmage. That Denver defense hasn't broken yet. And that's exactly what I was talking about, Lincoln. Someone set in the edge, and it happened on the very next play. The previous play, no one set the edge. Big gain. On this play, the defensive end right there ready to go, hitting her at the line of scrimmage, and it's a one-yard loss or minimal gain. That's what it's going to take for them to be successful on defense tonight. Tierra Romero among those in on the stop, but Denver has to come up with that stop perhaps two more times <laughs> to deny the score. Toss looking for a window and in a mile high. It's the Empire that strikes first here in Denver. Jessica Salazar able to punch it in. Yeah, they got five seconds. Well, and that is touchdown number four on the season for Jessica Salazar, lowering her shoulder, barreling into the end zone. I wouldn't be surprised if we see her number called up again for this conversion. Here she goes on the handoff, really untouched, gets those pad down, low man wins when it comes to contact, and she takes two Denver Rush defensive players into the end zone with her. Keeps those legs churning, looking for the conversion. Salazar is in. As Atlanta, with some icing on the cake here on its opening drive, it was Salazar with the interception on one end of the field and Salazar with the score on the other. And talking repeatedly this year with Dane Robinson, he keeps mentioning Jessica Salazar and MVP. That opening quarter, that opening drive, could you make a strong argument for that? We got the interception on one end, the touchdown and the conversion on the other. In this season, what I've seen so far, you certainly have to have her in the conversation with MVP. They entrust her with that two-point conversion as well. And Denver already is about to find itself in a hole before its second drawn. And it's gonna, they're, they're gonna have to cut out the turnovers. It killed them last game, and it started off again this game. 
So again, no kickoffs. You begin the drive from your 10-yard line after the opponent is able to find a score as they go back to Bria Quintana. Quintana from just down the road in Colorado Springs, the two-year veteran. Boy, she's in great shape. Why wouldn't she be a bodybuilder when it's not football season? And hats off to her. She's also a new mom as well. And being able to find the time to raise kids, play football, and bodybuild, that is a busy woman. So Jessica Poole back in under center here on second down. And five to go. Opportunity out on the edge. Ball stripped loose. Can Atlanta come up with a second turnover? Or was Denver able to recover? First down, Black. Able to get it back. Stacy Harmon will keep that defense out there for Atlanta after she wins the ball for Denver. Almost a complete and total disaster for Denver on their second play of the drive. The ball comes out, and it looks like Atlanta was going to come up with it, but on the bottom of the pile, a Denver player, and it's a first down. Most importantly, it's not a turnover. Have to be able to value that football. Play is not dead until you hear that whistle. Able to break a couple of tackles, and it's Quintana just fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage. That is one of the better one-yard runs you'll ever see. For all intents and purposes, it looked like that was going to be a four-yard loss when ZZ Green was in the backfield almost instantaneously. But a fantastic effort, right, no quit three, attitude three. from Quintana, we'll and it ends up being a one yard gain instead of a three or four yard loss. Likely the final play seconds. here in the opening quarter. You hear Jessica Poole being reminded she had 10 seconds to go. And that's your quarter. I tell you, 10 seconds. So the first drive for Denver ended with an interception salazar would stay out there and punch one in along with the conversion eight nothing atlanta here in denver first year head coach of the denver rush john hasin let's see if they can keep this a one score ball game and maybe being a mile above sea level by the time that fourth quarter comes around might kick in with the opposition. Absolutely, I think all these sports teams in Denver are going to have a little bit of advantage. The longer the game goes, it's hard to fight that altitude. Ready, there go. On second and nine, hand off to Quintana. She's met in the backfield and it's as if Atlanta knew Denver's playbook. There go. And that's going to be number 11, Keon Harrison, who started last week for the first time at middle linebacker for Atlanta. And she just flies around to the football. She was a very impressive versus Austin and a very impressive start for her hey, so far yellow, yellow, versus yellow, Denver. Okay. Harrison, that great Red high deal. motor, so yeah, physical. And Red like two. a lot of these two. women, that's grew up playing on teams where they were Ready? the only female. Right. Played varsity boys soccer. In high school. Ready. There you go. On third and long. A flag is down. And Atlanta gets into the backfield. Scott Jesus. As they're able to wrap up Taisha Davis. Yep, this is going to be offsides here. It's going to negate a great play. And Coach Robinson is going to be livid. It's little mistakes like that that he doesn't put up with. You have to be three yards from the line of scrimmage on defense. You could clearly see the left defensive end's foot in the neutral zone for the five-yard penalty. And Coach Robinson, he will not forget about that. Ready? That penalty, though, still not enough for a first there down. Third and 11. They'll go to the air. And two receivers it's in the up, area. Up, not up, sure up. who the intended receiver was. It looked like... May have been Kelly Kells, but ultimately Poole unable to find either of her targets. And it looks like you had Kelly Kells and Maddie Freeman kind of in the same area, and it looks like neither one of them was sure exactly who was supposed to catch the ball. Excuse me, that was Crystal Wright. And at the end, it's kind of in between both of them, and I think when she sees that play again, Poole's going to wish she had that one back. 
Although if she had held on to it any longer, she would have been wrapped up quickly with pressure coming from Atlanta. So here is fourth down for the rush, already trailing by a touchdown and a two-point conversion. There is movement on both sides. Let's see what they go with here. They're going to call against the defender for a neutral zone infraction. They call against the offensive player for leaving early. 24. We'll see what Sean Burrow has to say about it. Ball start. Offense number 44. Five yards. Fourth down. Yeah, pre-snap infraction, so that's not something Atlanta can just decline to get the football back. But it is now fourth and a mile here in the Mile High City. Fourth and a mile, and Coach Robinson loves disguising blitzes. He likes to cover some. He likes to show it. He likes to disguise it. And when you're a rookie quarterback like Jessica Poole is with minimal experience, with one-year experience, he's going to have something special for her on this fourth down, to be sure. Can the rush protect their quarterback long enough for her receivers to get downfield? Poole. May have been an issue there with the center quarterback exchange. She'll just get some positive yardage, but this ball is going over to Atlanta with another stop. First down of the way. First Absolutely, down the way. and that's not a turnover, but you could categorize it as a turnover as the basic center quarterback exchange. And actually, hats off to Jessica Poole for not losing her cool on that play and picking it up and getting some yards, which helps the field position a little bit, but still kind of something you expect at this point in the season to be able to get a snap on. So Atlanta's defense has been out there twice. One interception and one turnover on downs result right now. That shutout still intact, up 8-0, and a chance to add some insurance here. Bailey Hodgins, 18 years young, your signal caller. Great protection and blocking up front on the screen. Opportunity to go the distance. Atlanta looking to strike for a second time. A yard shy is Lauren Ziegler. Oh, but what a job by Hodgins. And then the blocking in place in front of Ziegler. Absolutely. Ziegler's going to get the credit for the run, as she should. Hodgins is going to get the credit for the pass, as she should. But look at 15, Julia Fezekai on that block right there. That sets the entire play up. And then Ziegler using her athletic ability and almost gets it in, but she gets stopped at the one. Fantastic play by the Atlanta Empire. Jessica Salazar punched it in for the first touchdown. You've got Ziegler in the backfield. Will they reward her? They do, trying to stretch it out. Ziegler is in as she will backpedal her way in for the second score of the night for the Empire. And another rushing touchdown for the Atlanta Empire. That power formation, everybody in tight. A lot of people think when you're playing seven on seven, the move is to spread everyone out. Atlanta doesn't think that way. Offensive coordinator Dominique Robinson compresses the formation to make it easier to get the edge. Great job blocking and a pretty easy path into the end zone. And they continue to show why they are the league's number one rushing attack. They will go for two. Salazar met in the backfield, nothing doing. And Atlanta will have to be content with the fresh six points they just put on the board. And a great job by Afeyoma Amika, the linebacker, coming up. Again, that time they set the edge. Someone got penetration. It wasn't just a straight and easy path for Salazar. Unfortunately, that's only the second time the Denver Rush defense has really set an edge. It works when they do it, but they're going to have to improve their execution on defense if this game's not going to get away from them. Already four minutes have melted off the second quarter clock, and along the way, Atlanta has grown its lead. So a two-score deficit now for Jessica Poole and this rush offense here playing in front of their home crowd. I think at some point you're going to have to let Jessica Poole do some sort of simple throw, just something to where Coach Robinson's not going to be able to dial in on the run all the time. Even if it's just a long pass up the sidelines, just something to cool Atlanta off just a little bit. Lauren Ziegler looked like she was administering CPR to the football after her touchdown in the end zone, but it's Jessica Poole whose day job is working as an EMT. She needs to try to resuscitate this offense before things get out of hand. 
And nobody was biting on the fake as Poole is dropped for a five-yard loss. Lincoln, I'm not sure if this was a fake or it may just be a busted play. If you look, Jessica Poole looks pretty confused. There's going to be one fake. And then it looks like she's looking for something else to do with the ball, but it's not there. There's one fake. And, of course, it could be that number 11, Keon Harrison, is right in her face, kind of like the last time on that pass. But maybe she just didn't have any option other than run for her life. And Robinson will tell anybody who listens, Keon Harrison, probably the most underrated player in the whole league. And you're seeing why early on. She was absolutely fantastic for us, Austin. So Poole in the shadows of her own end zone. Sees some daylight. Tucks that football down. Atlanta trying to strip it loose, but she gets up to midfield. What a gain. The great composure on the run from Jessica Poole. Coach Asin said he wanted Jessica to take some chances running. This looks like a design quarterback run all the way. Watch her set her feet, and then she runs. And you can look, that center's downfield, ready to block. Good athletic ability, good play call, and well-designed and well-executed on the part of Denver. Why not dial up that play one more time and give yourself a touchdown? I think Jessica Poole's hey. legs are going to be key in this game. Absolutely. There you go. From midfield, high snap. Poole get a, a fortunate hop. And she'll get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gain a yard. That ball taking a friendly bounce. Here on this artificial surface, back into the arms of the quarterback, Poole. And the legs of Poole didn't go for a big run this time, but they certainly you. stopped this for being a big loss. Again, another quarterback center exchange, and you need Manute Bowl back there to catch that. Good job getting back to the line of scrimmage. Denver's going to take a timeout, presumably to keep their quarterback in this ball game. Jessica Poole looked a little roughed up there at the boards. As we step aside, week six of the X League well underway. Atlanta has struck twice. Denver called that timeout a moment ago, and our best guess is Jessica Poole. Look, she's been running for her life here in this opening half. She was introduced to the boards on that last play, but you want to be able to keep your signal caller in the ball game just to make sure you have somebody who has a relationship with that center snapping the football. Absolutely, you got to protect the meal ticket. Second and eight. Next snap here from midfield for Denver. Poole rolls to her left, swatted down. No, ma'am, not interested. The wag of the finger from Afezakon. And sometimes you roll out and the defensive end's 5'7", sometimes you roll out and the defensive end is 6'1", and with a reach well over eight feet. And that is number 15, Jolie Fazakai. And nope, not over that tree trunk right there. What a great play. What an athlete right there from a Fazakai. That is impressive. I think you already worked in your Minute Bowl Whee! reference tonight. There you go. Third and eight, another high snap. Not as fortunate of a bounce this time. It is still loose, and Poole will drop it once more, but recovers. But Denver heading in the wrong direction on third down. Boy, Lincoln, that is uh, that is bad snap. Number three, uh, two on a shotgun, two on an under center. And it is the center, if it's a bad snap, it, it's got to be low. I mean, ideally, it's a perfect snap, right? I'm not saying that. But it's the high ones, just like on punt. The low ones, you've always got a chance. The high ones. Boy, you're looking at a bad, bad play, and now it is fourth and an absolute mile and a team that's not really good at passing and maybe a quick kick here. I believe they changed centers, and as you mentioned, the quick kick to try to change the real estate. That'll make its way all the way to the end zone as Atlanta will get this back for its third possession of the opening half. And let's see if the Empire can strike at least one more time with two and a half minutes to go until we've reached halftime. And I think that's probably a good move right there, fourth and that kind of distance. It's going to be tough to come up with a positive play for your offense. You keep the turnovers off the table. You flip the field. You try to do the best you can. Get out there and play defense for two and a half minutes. See if you can keep them out of the end zone and go in down only 14 points. Let's see what happens here. Atlanta is two for two. Let's see if John Hassin's defense can come up with a stop of their own. 
and set up their offense one more time here before the break. Out of the eye formation. Untouched, Salazar downfield, and finally brought down inside the 14-yard line. One of Dominique Robinson's core thoughts on offense is out leveraging. There's inside and there's outside leverage. Two lead blockers, only one defender, and you've still got Lindsey Ezel running down, waiting to find someone to block. Just outmanned at the point of attack right there. Great play design by Atlanta and a bad job of run fits from the Denver Rush defense. We have reached the two minute warning in the opening half. Third possession of the night on the road tonight for the Atlanta Empire. Looking to go three for three and continue to build this league tonight in week six in the X League. Two minute warning led us to that last break. This next snap inside the 15 yard line of Denver as Bailey Hodgins trying to lead a third scoring drive. And Hodgins with three running backs will go to the air. Downfield incomplete. And I'm not really sure who they were supposed to go to. You had a Fazekai in the back of the end zone and you had Kayla Weller short. I thought when that play developed, she was gonna throw a short dart to number 13, Kayla Weller, because she was wide open and uncovered. Uh, but it looked like that ball was just kind of in between. And I think for Atlanta to take the next step in their development, Bailey Hodges is going to have to be a little sharper on her passes because at some point someone's going to stop that run. So second and 10 from the 14, back to Salazar. Oh, a nifty cut to get an extra couple of yards, but she's finally brought down at the 11, and that clock continues to melt away now after they opt to keep it on the ground. Absolutely, and, and that's their strength right now, and that's a good play call. And for the most part, Salazar has gone for more runs than that. But the defender does a good job right there coming up. I understand she doesn't get off the block, but that's partly moving towards that set in the edge where at least you're coming up, you're bringing physical, you're bringing it a little bit and making them earn those yards rather than giving it to them. Yeah, the aforementioned rookie Romero in on the play. Hodgins gets rid of it in time. Let's see if she can get herself a pass interference call as she looks downfield. And that secondary had her receiver blanketed. Absolutely, and uh, you and I were on the same page on that, link. And I was thinking, you don't see many pass interference calls in the X League. Oh, Defense, one. they snuck Ball a flag in on us. First down. Got to be able to turn around if you're going to play that tight. Absolutely, and, and I did think it was going to be, well, that's just a tackle right there. That'll get you some points at a wrestling match. There's that flag that came in late. Good call, I think that's the right call, Lincoln. So, a minute 11 to go. Empire trying to do themselves a great service by tacking on a third score before halftime. Foul in the end zone, brings the ball to the five yard line. Right for my whistle. This defense got to attack, 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 or it's going to be another rushing touchdown. Salazar, but immediately met on the edge again by Romero. And that's what you're going to have to have. Attack, attack, attack. You've got to go get it. You've got to play like a cruise missile. When you see it, you got to fire a gun. you got to go. When you sit in place on defense and you wait for it, you wait for it, it never works out. It's better to read it and go with your gut and go hard and go fast and go now than it is to sit around and wait. You're gonna come out on top more often than not. Romero gives up five inches up against Salazar, but she believes she can win that battle every time. And she sticks her head in there. Out of the shotgun, Hodgins on second and goal. Wide open in the end zone and they finally get to reward a pace of kind. They go to the veteran, that six foot one target, who was wide open in a zip code of her own. And the safety is obviously the one that has to cover a phase of Kai on that. Her eyes are in the backfield instead of on her pass read, and it's wide open. You'll see this right here. Watch the safety's eyes. She's looking into the backfield, and it's a flag route from a phase of Kai, and she is wide, wide open. Good job getting that ball on the body. Good touchdown pass and another impressive drive from Atlanta. 
Three possessions for the Empire. Three touchdowns to show for it. Now they failed on their last two-point conversion. After converting their first try tonight. Salazar, the lone back. As they go for two, Hodgins rolls out. Will take it herself. Bailey Hodgins able to call her own number as the teenager punches it in. Absolutely, it's a bootleg pass with a bunch of crosses in the middle, but I'm sure Bailey Hodgins has a run pass option when she comes around the end and there's absolutely no contain from the Denver Rush. It's a very easy decision, even if you are a rookie quarterback, when you see nothing but green grass in front of you, tuck that ball in and take it to the house. They call Bailey the future. No, no, no. She is the now. As she has led the Empire up and down this field three times tonight at quarterback. Right up. Nothing behind you. Hey, keep, keep it, keep it, keep it. And Dane Robinson wants to make sure his defense doesn't give up points with 25 seconds to go in the half. New quarterback. They'll test the arm downfield and another interception. Second turnover tonight for this defense. Everybody getting in on the act. This time it's Rachel Blacklock. Rachel Blacklock City deep, deep, deep. Getting the crown, go ahead, take a bow. That's as good as you can play that deep safety position. You got a team that's desperate, a team that's got to throw deep. Coach Robinson has her sitting back well on the other side of midfield looking for that deep ball. Eyes on the quarterback the whole way. That ball's in the air a long time. Great break on it. Great job high pointing that football. It's a touchdown. The question, Lincoln, 20 seconds left. Can Atlanta tack another score on before half? That was Vanna Medrano in a quarterback, presumably to use her arm to fire that one downfield, but off the mark. And now, as you know, Atlanta with 14 seconds to pile on more. Hodgins, she'll show off her arm as her receiver pleads for a flag. No such luck as she was looking to link up with Lauren Ziegler. I think there may have been a little bit of holding, but I think overall that's a pretty good no call on a vertical route on the outside from Ziegler. Got to let them be able to bump each other just a little bit. It can't just right. be if, if it's a we touch, it's automatically going to be a flag. I like that no call, let them play ball right there. Okay. Go right. I have to imagine this next play call is going to be pretty similar. Eight seconds to go on second and ten. Forget the down and distance. That end zone's the target. With eight seconds remaining in the half. Hodgins. Oh Great protection, great arm, and there's the flag that comes in that they wanted on the last play. So there's going to be three seconds to go. The intended receiver that time, Lindsey Ezel. What number? Pass of the DFS number one. Ten yards from the further spot, automatic first down. You see that a lot from offensive these days when they need to get a chunk of yards obviously they're going to go deep i'm not saying that but they're looking to draw that flag that flag's as good a completion even if time were to run out the half can in on a defensive penalty so you're still going to get another play no matter what i like the play call i like the effort at the ball and let's see what we can get on this last play of the game and it's not a bad penalty because it is not a spot foul absolutely when i was a defensive coordinator we used to tell people hey don't give up six points. Take the penalty if you need to. Hodgins, a little bit of pressure, rolls out. Lost the football. Denver will fall on it, but with no time left. The rush comes up with a stop before the teams head to the locker room. But it's the Empire turning heads for a second straight week right now, shutting out the home team 22-0. Absolutely. Very impressive first half for the Atlanta Empire on both sides of the ball. They picked up where they left off running, and they picked up where they left off playing solid defense. We are already midway through week number six of the X League as we have reached tap time with the Empire of Atlanta up. Half time in Denver. Right now, the Rush in their home opener being shut out by Atlanta. Let's take you inside the Denver Rush locker room. 
two wide outs going out for a fucking pass, and that's it. It's, it's a little okay? bit better. It's just fucking leave it. That's all we got to do. Because we get nothing. Nothing. I mean, damn, we hand off the fucking ball in our ass before she even hands it to him. I mean, fuck, what are we going to do? This team ain't even bigger than fucking Seattle. You see them out there. They not in shape. They're just big and aggressive as fuck. Let's hold them, goddammit. Let's get some fucking plays. We got on the other side of the fucking field. We can do it. And once we get in there, we're going to grind it out. Yep. What are we down? Three touchdowns right now? Shit. Fuck, man. Like falling the fuck apart. Yeah, we still can get it. That's the message with your season on the line. Right now, Denver trailing Atlanta by three scores. In Denver tonight for week six of the X League, Atlanta fresh off of turning some heads with a win over Austin, but they're not sneaking up on anybody for the rest of the season. People know what they're up against when the Empire comes to town, and right now, we take you into the Atlanta locker room. 21 on that six, on that Congo, uh, on that six, stem the shit out of her. I broke her ankles twice already. She can't move her feet, because all she's trying to do is hit you in the face yeah. and knock you off your route. No, defense is pitching a shutout. So let's fucking make sure that we do what we have to do to support them. They're doing what they have been asked to do thus far in this game. Those girls are going to come out tired. I don't give a fuck that they live a mile high. Boo hoo wah. They're going to come out tired as shit because they're so sick of getting hit by number 39. You hear Jessica Salazar talking the talk. You've already seen her walk the walk, an interception and a touchdown in the first half, and she's hungry for more. Bailey Hodgins, after her defense went out and got her the football in the first half on that opening drive, is going to begin the second the half clock. with the football. So they're going to have a chance to pile on some points here quickly. And I think for the uh, continued development of the Atlanta offense, Bailey Hodgins, they're going to have to get her comfortable throwing the ball. So I look to see a few more throws in the second half. I understand that you can run the ball whenever you want, but at some point further down the road in the playoffs, you're going to need a quarterback that feels comfortable passing when the other team knows you're going to have to pass. The 18-year-old quarterback just looks so comfortable under center. Two years playing varsity. Black football at Sequoia High School. Some of her high school teammates are on this squad for the Empire. Great to have that existing chemistry as there's Lauren Ziegler. And I think that's a really good opportunity in the state of Georgia. Flag football is a varsity sport. And I would love to see that in more states across the United States because the interest is definitely there. Pistol right, X double trap right. Pistol right, X double trap right. I want to run. Ready? Friday night, taking in some football here in the midst of the summer. What an opportunity for these women to continue to grow the game as pioneers here in the X League. And as this what? league and this sport on the women's side just continues to grow. And who wants to try to run interference and put a halt to the surge that time from Nina Francis? We mentioned a member of the German national team in basketball. And she doesn't get too many carries. Maybe with a little bit of a lopsided score, she'll get involved in the offense a little more. You can see a little bit of a miscommunication there between Bailey and Nina on that handoff, but a good run nonetheless. Maddie Freeman finally stepping up for Denver to come up with the stop after the first down run. Good look over the shoulder there. Ball to go from Bailey Hodgins and what she sees in that Denver defense. She'll dump it down, and well, you have a feeling that Jada Donaldson was already thinking about the turn and run before securing that one. Absolutely, and I, and I do like this does show progression on the part of the quarterback Hodgins. Her eyes go deep first, trying to complete that deep shot, and then there's that incomplete pass on the check down to Donaldson. One thing I've noticed, Hodgins has a lot of balls that are a little bit high. Usually that happens for a couple of reasons. One, the throwing arm elbow doesn't get above the shoulder. That's just a mechanical thing that has to happen for quarterbacks. Another thing you'll see is not stepping into that throw in order to get enough velocity to keep that ball lower. Out of the shotgun. A little shovel pass, and Denver was ready. What a great response up front by Burrell. 
Great play right there from the defensive end. That's a good job coming out of halftime and attacking the run. You've had the passes, but that's the first run. Attack, attack, attack. That's the way you want to start to show that you've made some great adjustments in the second half. Here it is again, shedding that block and in the backfield almost immediately. More of that, please, Denver. That's what you need to do. Right. The hit. They were still able to get just enough for a first down. And nothing fancy here, just straight ahead. Nina Francis, the beneficiary of that great blocking up front for the women from the Peach State. Absolutely, the blocking up front by the tight ends in the center, also the blocking from the two backs, leading the way from Nina Francis. Sort of a freight train, just chugga, 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 three yards, five yards, six yards, and before you know it, they're inside the five looking to score again. After that seven yard gain, here's second and three. On the edge, looking for Paydirt with Ziegler. She's already made one visit into the end zone. So we stopped a little short here. And now a late flag comes flying in after a little extracurricular activity. You see Bree Roy emerging from that pile. After the play, personal foul number zero on the defense. He said number zero, he meant number eight. That's Bree Roy. Absolutely, and if you were tuned in at halftime, you heard Ziegler talking about not retaliating. They mentioned that Denver was getting a little chippy and a little bit dirty in the second half, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Ziegler kept her cool, Bree Roy lost her cool, and 15-yard penalty. One play later, a battle at the goal line, and for the moment, the Empire are still being kept out as Bree Roy. And this is an absolutely outstanding solo tackle by Bree Roy, lowering her pads down and being the lowest person in the collision. That is textbook right there. That is a great stop against someone who's bigger and stronger than you are. I'm very impressed with that. Watch this. There it is, watch her sink her hips right there. Hits her right there in the thighs, drives her feet. You could take that to any football clinic in the country. That is beautiful. Low woman wins, there at the line. Hodgins under center. She'll take it herself and she is in. Hodgins able to extend that ball across the goal line before Maddie Freeman, who is surging her way, is able to halt the opportunity. Empire have struck, they are four for four now. Boy, I got a little nervous on this one. I thought Maddie Freeman was absolutely gonna clean Bailey Hodgins' clock, but Bailey Hodges does a good job ducking it right at the end. I thought right there, Freeman was coming in hard and fast. Good job that quarterback protecting herself, which is something you're gonna have to do if you're a running quarterback. Of course, the. Score and play immediately blown dead the moment that ball graces the edge of the goal line. So Hodgins wasn't risking fumbling it as they go for two here. As Atlanta will be kept out, it's their second unsuccessful conversion. Ziegler thought she had enough for the score, but, but for now, it is 28-0 Empire. And I thought she was a little bit short. I didn't think she got there again. That play wasn't quite as cleanly executed. That's the second time they've run that little, looks kind of like a shuffle pass or a little inside toss sweep. And that's the second time the timing just wasn't quite right. You watch, she is past the quarterback Hodges by the time she gets the ball. That kind of disrupts the play from the get-go right there. And quite clearly, she did not make it. And yeah, she was down before extending that one. Now we do remind you in the X League, coaches do have a challenge in each half, and if they happen to be correct on their challenge, they can use it one more time that half. But it's a moot point now. Denver came up with a stop on the conversion, though conceded their fourth touchdown now. They trail by four scores. This time they go to Crystal Wright. And we saw this in the first game when Denver played Seattle. In the second half, they went to Crystal Wright more, and Crystal Wright, she's got a little wiggle, she's got a little moxie. She makes people miss, and she was definitely a bright spot in a very one-sided game versus Seattle. Kind of a little bit of a mystery to me. I thought she would feature into the game plan heavily early and often for Denver, but maybe they're gonna get her in now. 
Wright was their top receiver in that go. loss to Seattle with a touchdown, averaging almost 18 yards per catch. Pool. And it's a first down, about four yards shy of midfield. And I think if you've got one offensive theme for the Denver Rush that tell true for this game, it's been the legs of Jessica Poole right here on a little zone read. And you can see right there, she does have 123 yards passing and two touchdowns, but her leg is really what gets it done for this Denver offense. Those are her numbers for the season so far, including against Seattle. Ready? Yeah. He had the first Very down good. run a moment ago. And it will be a handoff. They'll keep it on the ground. And those legs are churning, getting close to another first down with Corey Hardaway. And another good run right there, this time from Hardaway, who's showing she's got a little bit of athletic ability as well. She makes a great cut on the defensive lineman that gets upfield. From Atlanta, you'll see it right here on the replay. Watch this going outside. Whoop! Plant that foot in the round, ground, and get vertical. That's a really nice run. They call her Cobra. Her day job, she's a track Ready. coach. It's like receiving the baton, but this time she's not there letting go. go of that baton. She wants the finish line. And that is a hot potato. And Atlanta's going to come up with its third turnover of the bowl game, as Denver never had the rock. We mentioned during the halftime breaks the, the drive killers for Denver. And number one on my list was the turnovers. And there it is, rearing its ugly head again. Every time you think Denver's got something going, they do something to shoot themselves in the foot. Unfortunately, this time it wasn't a high snap. It was another turnover. And you've done what you really don't need to do, and that's get the ball back to this Atlanta offense. Callie Stanley, part of that Sequoia High School pipeline. Comes up with her second turnover on the season to go with an interception in their season opener. On the ground, just controlling that clock and controlling this game. And this time, they still run that similar play, a little inside run designed to go off the tackle. But if you notice, it's a subtle difference. This time, instead of doing that little toss, that's a handoff. The timing was much better. The handoff was very clean, and that play works really well. There it is. It's a handoff instead of a toss. That's a little bit of a difference, and that allows Ziegler to hit that full speed, and she gets a chunk of yards. The way Lauren Ziegler's teammates are blocking, this could be two-hand touch, and she could still be taking a chunk out of that field position ahead of her. Now they're going to reward one of those big bodies up front. I love it. I love it. It's kind of like in the old school I formation days, you throw that fullback a bone. That's 81. April Milky from the tight end position. That's her first carry of the year. And I think that is great. You've got to reward those people that are down there Georgia doing the dirty work. Georgia 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 Hodgins will go to the air, under pressure, and almost making a poor decision, throwing that one into traffic. As among those in the area for Denver was Trill Benjamin. And you're wondering if anyone back there in that Denver secondary made a call that communicates, I'm going to go for the interception. Sometimes it's an Oski call. More often than not, you yell Oski, Oski, Oski. It's like the pop fly, I got it. You call everybody off. But it looks like no one really kind of stepped up because this ball should be 100% intercepted. Great pressure put on right there by Boo Bonick smith from her defensive end position, almost forcing what would have been a critical turnover. Uh, the aggressive rookie out of Decatur, Illinois with the pressure on Hodgins. Final play of the third quarter. And it'll be Atlanta with the football at the six yard line. When we resume play here in week number six in the X League, it is all Atlanta here on the road tonight.
You're looking at one of the top two-way players in the league, let alone on this Atlanta Empire roster, Lauren Ziegler, and what a night she's already had. Absolutely, she was the leading rusher in the league coming into this game, and she is only added to her stats. Five rushes, 43 yards, and a touchdown. That is over eight yards every time she touches the ball on a run play. She will split out wide. Again, Bailey Hodgins, your prodigy quarterback. On fourth down, trying to get back into the end zone, and Denver comes up with a stop at the two-yard line. That is really good physical play right there. That's a nice blast from Bailey Hodgins. That ball's out in front of the running back where she can hit it running downhill. But that is some good physical play stepping up from the secondary of Atlanta. Again, that time Atlanta defense, they were the hammer instead of the nail and stopped them on a big fourth down play. Leaves the door open for them somewhat. In halftime, that is your first stop of the night for Denver. A little less than a quarter to go for a comeback. First thing they have to do is take that zero off the scoreboard. And to do that, Lincoln, they're, they're going to have to take care of the football. You can't have the high snaps. You can't have the turnovers. They've done an okay job of moving the chains, but every time they get something going, they seem to find a way to kind of trip themselves up on their march to the end zone. I really think if they can play a clean series, they can score points. That's not a problem. Denver has gone to Taisha Davis as their center, snapping the football here to Poole. Out of their own end zone. Still on her feet. Corey Hardaway not giving up on that run, but the ball does not come loose until they rule Hardaway is already blown down. Boy, that was close again. She was down, but the fact that that ball came loose, I can promise you Coach Asin had a little lump in his throat right there. That is a good play. We've seen the emergence of Corey Hardaway, the Cobra, throwing a little sizzle into this offense here into the second half. Good run, good start, moving the chains again. Let's see if they can stay out of their own way and execute cleanly. All right, that first minute, melting off. The fourth quarter clock. Progress was stopped. Yeah. I think they're challenging whether it was a fumble or not. It wasn't because we all saw the ball, but you got progress first? Uh, yeah, she was down. And then the ball came they up. They can't challenge progress. She was oh. down and the ball was forward down. progress. Hey, Zeus, we got ball. You can't challenge progress. You can't challenge progress? forward progress. That, first of all, first of all, four of us saw it, and yeah, the knees were already down. Second of all, he ruled progress before. Mark, you can't challenge progress. He called progress. Either way, either way, she was down. Well, we can't tell you anything that Sean Burrow didn't just relay to Dane Robinson. Obviously, if you not able to be challenged, Roy on the field was forward progress was stopped first down. And that is significant. Once forward progress has been determined, if that is why the play is halted, you can't go back and change things. That happened after the fact. Now, as Coach Robinson would state, if it hadn't been because of forward progress, but because the knee was down, they then can argue whether or not that ball was out beforehand. There's a good look at it right there. And forward progress or knee down, either way, I think that is not a fumble. I think the refs got that call for it. Pool had one option and finally gives herself up. Salazar has to be careful there. Ooh, that was close right there. She was sliding right there, giving herself up. When you get in a league that calls it as clean as something like the NFL does, then it looks like that could be a penalty, but apparently it's not going to be. I mean, that's not much in that right there, but still, that's the way the rule's written. I believe our officials got both players left a lot to be desired there. Quarterback could have given herself up a little bit quicker and more of a baseball slide getting low. Although our second look there looks like Salazar probably had time to peel off. I agree. And it's this Atlanta defense trying to keep that shutout intact. And looking to pad some stats along the way. As laying the lick that time, ZZ Green. Good job, ZZ Green, flying around to the football. This is going to be another busted play from the Denver Rush. 
This is going to go back to one of the previous plays we've seen. That's a good job scrambling right there from Jessica Poole. But again, running back's not on the same page with the quarterback, and that play was dead in the water from the start. Oh, with Denver looking at a third and long, they will call a timeout. You see the numbers nine for Jessica Poole. Can she dial up a comeback? Down four scores here in quarter four in Denver. Not a point. Well, no need to redo the contract of Dane Robinson with Atlanta. Look out, Seattle, your heavy favorites this year in the X League, but Atlanta does not look like it's showing any signs of slowing down here in rare form. 100%. The best two teams I've seen so far. I've seen Atlanta play twice. They've looked great both times. I've seen Seattle play once versus Denver. They looked great. Again, going back to August 6th, that Seattle-Chicago matchup, that's going to tell us a lot about both of those teams. But if you're Denver head coach, John Hassin, you're wondering how much of this is just the difficult schedule you're playing, as you've now seen arguably the two best teams as they try to methodically work their way upfield, still looking for that first score of the night. The connection that time to Amika. And certainly the schedule makers from the X League did not do Denver any favor scheduling the top two teams we've seen so far. Good sidearm delivery right there. Really a tough throw to make on the run under pressure. Nice That's completion okay. there. Hold these blocks over here, okay? Amika with the catch there, Ball former side. basketball Ball player right. for the U.S. Air Force Academy. The Canadian at quarterback, hand off to Hardaway. Gets out of one shoestring tackle, but a nice job by Salazar holding up Hardaway long enough for a couple of teammates to chime in. Good job, nothing fancy right here, just to run right up the middle again. I'm very impressed with the cuts that Hardaway makes. Once she sees it, she gets that foot in the ground and she gets vertical and she picks up yards as soon as she can. Nice job right there. Oh, He's had a couple of right? nice runs. She Theory moved from running back to receiver for this contest, but they're leaning on her when they need someone to protect the football. As Hardaway still in the backfield with her quarterback pool. There you go. Second and a long two. Pool under pressure and just has to get rid of that one before she gets leveled by Rachel Blacklock. Yep, there were three Atlanta Empire players in the backfield right there and really not much you can do back there as quarterback when you've got three people in your face. Actually, pretty good job of getting that ball either thrown away or put where no one but her receiver could get it. We've seen that plenty of times tonight back there running around for her life, Jessica Poole. It's been a tough evening for her. No doubt on the part of Rachel Blacklock and ZZ Green rushing from Atlanta. Denver just needs two yards to extend this drive Whee! midway through the fourth quarter. There you go. As again, it's back to Emika. As she's met by Salazar and a couple of her closest friends in Atlanta. But that is good enough to keep this drive going for the home team as Denver continues to try to pursue that end zone for the first time. And a good little inside trap play right here. You can see it coming from the tight end spot right there. Well executed, good, tough run, way to finish. I like it when you see ball carriers finish falling three, four, forward all three, the time. Three, that three, that gets your team fired up. That gets them motivated. When you see offensive players moving the pile, that, that's infectious. Trying to reward the fans who came out tonight with a score to celebrate. 11, 11, right from my left side. Trying to get something positive going, something to build on from Denver here. Diego. Quintana on the edge. Oh and she thought she had some clear sailing ahead. And that's before she finally ran into that storm out there on the seas named Salazar. Anyone out there looking like, want to know how you play linebacker, watch number 39, Jessica Salazar. When you're watching film of linebackers, and it looks like a running back's got it, and all of a sudden, you see someone coming out of nowhere, you got a good one, and there she is, sideline to sideline, delivering a blow. What range, and then the physicality on the tail end of that. Gonna need to take a couple extra Advil tomorrow morning for that Denver player, that was impressive. 
Form tackle from Salazar gets her head in front of the ball carrier. And Atlanta stiffening up here, trying to maintain that shutout. And that is number 33, ZZ Green. She is all over that like white on rice. Great play, good job staying at home, reading her keys, and that play goes absolutely nowhere. Two very impressive plays, ZZ Green right there, and Jessica Salazar, the play before, bringing up third and long for Denver. Able to halt Kelly Kells on that last play. Poole hands off to Hardaway. You see Atlanta trying to strip that football while bringing Hardaway down. Good job by Keon Harrison coming in for that linebacker position, and no one even blocked the defensive end from Atlanta on that play, and while the running back was kind of shuffling her feet, figuring out where to go, Keon Harrison closed in from that linebacker position to clean that play up. And Robinson letting his women know it's fourth down. Rush have already converted on one fourth down. That was fourth and two. This is a bit taller of a task here inside the final three minutes. Need to get inside the three yard line. Pool, like a bullfighter, able to elude one defender. Does she have the first down? Yes. Jessica Pool should have been dropped to the line of scrimmage. What do you want? Want me to watch you the whole time? Able to get around that first defender and extend this drive. It'll be first and goal. And it's the legs of Jessica Pool again. I don't know how she gets out of the grasp of ZZ Green on that. Then a few cuts, a few ducks, a few jives, and all the way down inside the five yard line, setting up what should be the first score for the Denver Rush this game. They'll have four tries from two yards out as we've reached the two minute warning. And I look to see Corey Hardaway get the ball or maybe even pull when we come back. Denver will have a chance to talk it over. We're down to two minutes. Rush threatening to take that goose egg off the board. Trailing the empire of Atlanta. Denver Rush head coach John Hossein saw his women put up 26 points in their opener against Seattle, but tonight it comes down to the final two minutes. They do have a first and goal from two yards out. And Atlanta, well, flags will fly. I think Atlanta initially thought there was some movement, and finally. Offense to the 44, five yards. First and goal from the two is about to become first and goal from the seven. And Lincoln, I thought they were going to throw that flag immediately. The right tight end jumped and then reset. And then there is another jump and a reset. And finally, at the end of it, they get the call right. But you said it. The biggest part is this turns from first and goal from the two and turns into first and goal from the seven. That's the hardest kind of penalty to accept if you're a head coach. You just came out of a timeout. You know the scenario and you get a false start before your first snap on first and goal. Poole is going to be dropped. And this is not how you draw up. Trying to find your first score of the night. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, again, Keon Harrison comes through. They do a good job, Coach Robinson, dialing up. They stem the front. That's when you shift that defensive line at the very last second before the snap, and it looks like it had its desired effect, causing confusion among the Denver blocking scheme. And Keon Harrison coming in more or less unblocked. Tackle for a loss. And right now, first and two. We're back to second and 10, maybe 11. Out of the shotgun, Poole. As Denver continues to move backwards, Poole will just reclaim a little bit of the yardage lost there on that last sack. On the previous play, Keon Harrison, when those X-League highlights come out midweek, she didn't want to be on the wrong end of a stiff arm. As again, Dane Robinson wants the timeout here, wants to do everything he can to preserve a shutout. He's seen his Atlanta team perform well, but only find one score in their own right here in the second half. Let's listen in. Have a player come and call a timeout. That's all you have to do. Okay. That's all. 
whistle. Go away and you have your timeout. Have a timeout, sir. Understand, there's about to be a first down awarded. 15. Launch it off. Because that flag. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of contact here. Once he starts talking to the official, it's not the head official, Sean Burrow, but it's going to be a different official. And critically, an automatic first down. And boy, you don't expect Coach Robinson, who's got a long history coaching, to lose his cool like that when you're up 28 to 0. Again, it's first and goal now from the four yard line for Denver. Oh my God. The snap was back to Hardaway, and we have really seen some struggles with that center quarterback exchange. This time, center running back quarterback exchange. I'm not sure if this was supposed to be a flea flicker or just a bad snap and a heads up play by the running back. Regardless, it's another loss and backs them up even further. When they had a really good chance on first down, they got gifted an automatic first down, but they're not making anything out of it so far. Atlanta had so much movement on that line. If they're not going to get a false start, at least they were able to force the center to be a little uncomfortable. Absolutely stimming the front like they did a few plays ago. It worked good. It got Keon Harrison in for a tackle for a loss, caused a disruption on that last play as well. Denver has no timeouts left. Number 11, five yards. Denver, you have to throw the football here, don't you? Absolutely, and they, they look a little bit rattled. They need to regroup the best they can here in the final 10 seconds. How aggressive with a rush will Atlanta be here, or will they sit back and try to defend that end zone? With Coach Robinson, you're never sure. They show it, they drop, they drop, they show it, we'll see. And that could very well be your bowl game. The Empire of Atlanta hits the road to Denver and tonight pitches a shutout on the road. As Atlanta certainly will not be surprising anybody the rest of this season. You don't sneak up on folks when you play the way this team has played so far this year. No, absolutely not. Every time they play, they bring it. They bring it on offense with the run. They bring it on defense. They look really good to me. I expect to see them in the X Cup, the last game of the year, playing for that championship. One final time, a big thanks to our entire crew. For Lane Grigg, I'm Lincoln Rose. Atlanta Empire, still unbeaten. And perhaps, dare I say, your favorites in 2022 to reign supreme in the X League.